How powerful can a little boy's brain be? Tens of thousands of pieces of puzzles. He can finish them in just a few hours, no matter what book he reads. He can never forget it. His brain is like a sophisticated computer. His teacher gave him a unique name. <laughs> when my Aikoda was very young, his parents died in a car accident. He grew up with his wealthy grandfather. No sooner had the teacher taught my Aikoda basic life skills. He was dismissed by his grandfather. Then he found the best fighting instructor. To train my Aikoda's physical abilities, he was taught human structure and assassination techniques. Grandpa's real purpose was to turn him into a killing machine. The traffic accident that happened years ago, it was always a pain in his heart. The hidden driver got away and got away with it. He was already disappointed with the justice system. He wanted to train my Aikoda to be a machine of justice, kill all the bad guys in the world. Finally, one night, Grandpa's wish came true. A thief sneaked into the house, stabbed Grandpa, and set fire to the house. Before he died, he gave Aikuda Toma one last order. At his command, Toma Aikuda snapped the thief's neck with his own hands. After that, he disappeared with his huge inheritance. That day, a new patient came to the mental hospital. Yes, he was Toma Aikuda. The police suspected him of being responsible for the recent bus bombing. The police conducted a citywide search and managed to catch him, but on the day of his interrogation, he beat up several police officers with his bare hands. He gouged out his cellmate's eyes. He was so mentally disturbed. In order to determine his mental state, the police had to hand him over to the psychiatric department, but Maikuta didn't have any expression on his face the whole time. He answered whatever the doctor asked, accurate like a robot. The doctor took his brain waves and they were perfectly normal. There was no problem at all, but the female doctor, Yasuko Matsuyuki soon noticed that something was wrong. Every day he woke up and went to the toilet. And it was always the same time. Not a second out of place. What was even more bizarre was that he was different from ordinary people. He couldn't feel any pain. Yasuko Matsuyuki brought in the most advanced equipment. Continued to test him. This time, Yasuko Matsuyuki asked a tough question. Sure enough, the man's emotions fluctuated a bit. But the doctor next to him noticed that something was wrong. Every time after Yasuko Matsuyuki asked a question, he would have emotional fluctuations, and all his fluctuating images were copied. They were all identical. This is not a normal human reaction at all. And of identification, Yasuko Matsuyuki gave her conclusion. She concluded that the man was mentally abnormal. No emotion for everything in the world. The police officers who came to the conclusion was instantly furious. If Maiko Ta was mentally ill, as the real culprit of the bombing, he could no longer be convicted. In order to give an explanation to the deceased and his family, Yasuko Matsuyuki, together with the police, began to investigate Maikuta's past. From the mouth of his teacher, Maikuta had been different from other children since he was a child. He studied for a month just to go to the toilet. He wouldn't eat even if he was starving to death, without instructions from his family. Everyone thought he was mentally retarded. In fact, all this was arranged by his grandfather. The purpose was to turn Maikuta into a killing machine. Later, the police investigated. They found out that the suspect who killed Maikuta's parents had been killed years ago. Since then, a series of murdered victims in the neighborhood. All of them were criminals on the run. At that moment, the police suddenly realized Tma Aikuda was not the real killer of the bombing. The reason he was there was to punish the guilty, killing the real killer behind the scenes. The police were going to take him back for punishment, but Yasuko Matsuyuki called out to Tma Aikuda and told her own story. Many years ago, her brother was taken away by bad people. He was tortured to death with his hair shaved. Her mother cried her heart out and suffered from depression. But unlike her mother, Yasuko Matsuyuki always believed in the goodness of human nature. She did not bring the murderer to justice. She also helped the murderer to change his ways by way of reformation. He was given a new lease on life. And that's when, the murderer who killed her brother came to thank her. Yasuko Matsuyuki wants to use a living case to awaken Maikuta's inner feelings. But Maikuta just looked at him coldly. He didn't even look back. In the end, Maikuta was escorted to the police car. On the way back to the police station, two girls rushed to the police car. One arrow killed the driver and forced the police car to stop. It turns out they are the real culprits of the bombing. They killed without a second thought. One of them is the same kind of woman as Maikuta. She is the brain girl. But the difference is, Fumi Nikaido was instructed to kill without distinction. Maikuta opened fire in the panic of the crowd, only to be stopped by another woman. That woman detonated the bomb before she died. Fumi Nikaido was given the opportunity to escape. When the police got up from the ground, Maikuta also disappeared. And that was just the beginning. Fumi Nikaido grabbed Yasuko Matsuyuki and strapped bombs all over her body. At the same time, she caused a series of explosions in the hospital. The police arrived in a hurry, but in the smoke, they saw a familiar figure. It was Tma Aikuta. Explosions were still occurring in the building. Tma Aikuta just scanned the floor plan and immediately sensed the source of the bomb. How could the police trust a criminal? They rushed into the control room. But the next second, 
left Ma Aikota's words came true. Fumin Ikaido called and threatened the police. Either killed Ma Aikota with one shot, or watch his mane get blown to pieces. At this point, the police officers, who had always stood up for justice, was shaken. His subordinate couldn't bear to see his superior break the law. He struggled and fell down and detonated the bomb. The death of the subordinate completely crushes the police officer's faith. Meanwhile, a group of police officers tried to arrest Fumi Nikaido, but they burst into the house and the floor was already full of bombs. By the sense of his brain, Tama Aikuta dragged his broken leg to the underground garage. Not far away, the car lights came on. Fumi Nikaido had been waiting here for a long time. She stepped on the gas pedal and sped up. Tama Aikuta was knocked off her feet. Seeing that Tama Aikuta, who was in no pain, could still stand up, Fumi Nikaido smiled faintly and slammed the gas pedal into the man. Yasuka Matsuyuki pulled the handbrake at the moment of life and death. <laughs> Tama Aikuta smashed the glass and pulled out Fumi Nikaido. Just as Tama Aikuta was about to kill her, a voice called out to him. <laughs> Tama Aikuta slowly let go of his hand, but suddenly it was the righteous policeman, the man who once believed in justice. He had lost all faith. Tama Aikuta disappeared again with a wound. A few days later, Yasuko Matsuyuki received an email. It said, I'm going to kill your most important patient. Yasuko Matsuyuki braved the heavy rain. She rushed to the home of the murderer she had cured, but she was too late. The man on the ground was already dead. As Yasuko Matsuyuki was grieving, suddenly she heard a noise. Yasuko Matsuyuki lifted the cover of the bathtub. Inside was a child with shaved hair. He looked exactly like his brother who died eight years ago. At this moment, Yasuko Matsuyuki's worldview completely collapsed. When my Aikota first saw him, he found the child's bite marks on his arm. This guy has never changed from the beginning to the end. Maybe there are some goodnesses in this world that can never be touched, but there are also some evils that can never be redeemed. This is the end of the movie. Remember to subscribe if you like it.